Welcome back to the program. When the Socceroos line up in Brazil for next month's World Cup, there's no doubt it's going to be tough. But our top goal scorer, 34-year-old Tim Cahill, will be there to bolster our hopes. It will be his third World Cup and almost certainly his last. An emotional time for a man who doesn't like to show his emotions. But Tim Cahill has millions of reasons to smile. After a magnificent career in England's Premier League and a bank balance to match, he's now being paid handsomely to play his favourite game in America. I'm fearless. You know, I play on the pitch with, with no fear. Play every game like it's my last game. Half the battle for sports people and what people don't understand is mental. I want to be the best I can be in everything I do. Tim Cahill is one of Australia's best. A soccer legend who's conquered the Premier League in England and who is about to compete in his third World Cup. From the wonder boy of Australian football. Do you view yourself as having gotten lucky or do you think that this is what happens when you work hard? Now luck is a great word but I wasn't lucky because I was driven enough to chase it. You know, if, if, if I want to be lucky, I'll go do the lotto. Mind you, Tim Cahill's bank account looks like he's won lotto. He currently earns $3 million a year playing for the New York Red Bulls, America's professional soccer league, hand-picked alongside the likes of David Beckham and Thierry Henry to sell soccer to America. I'm not just someone who come up here to make the numbers. I wanted to, you know, be part of everything. And you, you can feel it? Can you feel the shift? It's massive. It's a tough sell in a country that loves NFL, baseball and basketball. But step inside this purpose-built stadium in New Jersey, there's no doubt they mean business. And so too does Tim Cahill. Scoring the first goal for his team tonight in front of his adoring fans, including me. What is it about soccer? Can you recall what it was that soccer gave you at a very young age? Maybe freedom. Maybe um, uh, that was the outlet. Tim Cahill grew up in Sydney's southwest. His father is English, his mother Samoan. A tight knit family that didn't always find life so easy. Living in Australia growing up was very tough. My parents rented all their lives. But overall, the way I see it is, you know, I was very blessed as well. I was very happy with the basics. And as long as I had my football and my mum and dad and my, my family, that's all that really mattered. Am I right in understanding, right from the beginning, you were being told you weren't good enough to be a soccer player? Yeah, but I was told, that, you know, you're not strong enough, you're not tall enough. But the more he was told he wasn't good enough, the more determined he became. He took his first big step to soccer superstardom when at just 17 he packed his bags and moved to England. That was a fairly brave decision, wasn't it, to go to the UK? I got home from school and um, my mum and dad sat me down and my mum was basically in tears and they said, um, do you want to continue school, do you want to go to England? Simple, didn't even batter an eyelid. But there was one person who did, his childhood sweetheart and now wife, Rebecca. What kind of kid was he? It's funny because in my boys now, I see a lot of Tim's character. He was always very charismatic. He was always like, you know, like the cute little one in school that everyone, so I naturally just sort of stayed away kind of thing. Too he was cute always though, like, was he? Yeah, yeah, and just, you know, he was interested in soccer only, you know, so. But it turns out soccer wasn't Tim's only interest. And before long, he asked Rebecca to join him overseas. One of the other brave decisions was by Rebecca to join you. Yeah, I don't know whether she's happy, but... <laughs> I 
think I think you can say she is. No, she's happy. I suppose um, for me, like she's my best friend. Tim's career started at Millwall, where he stayed for six years. But it was at Everton where he truly became a star. Tim has made himself the player that he is. He works harder in training than his opponents. Um, and he's almost willed himself tenaciously uh, to become the player that he is. Roger Bennett is a sports journalist for ESPN who's taken a keen interest in Tim's career. He played in England from 2004 and until he left he scored more goals with his head than any other player apart from Peter Crouch who has nine inches on him. Uh, so he's five foot ten. Somehow it's a mystery, it's almost like um, the Turin Shroud or Stonehenge. How does Tim Cahill get his head on so many balls? I can head a ball the way some people can kick a ball. I'm not scared of anything when it comes to, you know, if there's a boot's coming near my head or anything, I think that's the Samoan side that comes. You can use your noggin. My noggin, yes. OK, here comes the dumb question. Hmm. <laughs> Does it hurt when you use your head so often? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not a dumb question. No, it doesn't. It's never hurt? You've never...? Being in a backyard with my cousins and all the Samoans and that, um, I, my head's taken a f few knocks and kicks in the, in the backyard. Alongside the headers, Tim has also become known for his goal-scoring signature boxing celebration. And he's had plenty of reason to celebrate. While playing for Everton, he was earning $5 million a year. That money very quickly turned to millions. I haven't bothered to count them up. Have you? I don't count money. I prefer just to work, because when you're good at something, you'll always get paid. But what's the greatest thing money's done for you? Supported for my family. Um, made, made my family comfortable, me comfortable. Who's gonna score the next and family Who's gonna score is the next everything. Yeah. At his matches, they're all there, including his four children. And they were all there too when Tim and Rebecca finally decided to marry after 17 years together. Um, why did you leave getting married until 2010? Boom, great question. <clears throat> Your wife probably asked you to ask that. Probably because I wasn't ready and I wasn't responsible enough. But yet you were, in all senses, married. Yeah, but I was married anyway. I got kids. <clears throat> um, OK, Oceania, qualifications, Confederations Cup. Olympic Games, qualify for What the Tim's World telling Cup, me is he couldn't find the time. Cup, and certainly Cup, soccer has been all-consuming. I'm still going here. It's his job, and he works for these people, the hundreds of thousands of passionate fans who pack soccer stadiums every week. Surely there are occasions when you just feel like a rock star. I rung my agent, I told my missus, I told my mum and dad, Buying a Lamborghini. <laughs> That's when I felt like a rock star. And I only ever driven it a couple of days a week. In six years, it done 20,000 miles, not even. Aside from the Lamborghini, which he no longer has, and his family, Tim loves to spend his money on clothes. For eight years, he was dressed by Giorgio Armani. This boy from the Burbs now has a passion for fashion. And I love it because it's the footballer's or sports person's biggest expense. That's where you blow That's, your dough? Yeah, 100%, 100%. But if I slip on a jacket like this, with a bit of funkiness in it, with the collar, hopefully, like, um, my missus will look, uh, think nice. that I'm looking half decent, you know? So <laughs> this is pretty much me, because I can wear But trainers. Tim's gone from buying nice to jeans. designing. Today, he's doing a photo shoot preparing to launch his own fashion label. Shoreditch by Tim Cahill. There's two elements of looking at it. As a sports person, you get offered a deal. So you get offered $2 just to be the face and say, look, I look the business. I prefer to take a dollar and be involved in everything. And boy, are you involved. Yeah. Do you have a controlling issue? 
My wife says that all the time. <laughs> I only just just watching you. That's all. Yeah, I thought you're there's right. a man that needs to know everything. It's. <laughs> I'm trying to control this interview as well. <laughs> but one thing Tim can't control is this. That's his 11-year-old son Kaya singing the American national anthem in front of thousands of people. Dad standing proudly behind, it's little wonder this fiercely patriotic New York crowd has embraced the Cahills. Were you more worried about him than no, you? I was so nervous. I said, I had butterflies. And then once he'd finished, I can relax, you know, do my job. Tim Cahill's focus is now with the Socceroos and rewriting the history books after being sent off at the last World Cup. The first thing that I thought about when I got that red card was to take it on the chin and walk off and think about everyone in Australia watching me instead of being a baby and reacting. Is it bittersweet now? Do you have something to prove? No. Nothing to prove? I've actually proved to myself to be a good athlete, to my body maintenance, to get here, to get to a third World Cup. The draw is called the group of death. <laughs> you clearly don't think that way. It's, it is what it is. If you want to be the best, then you've got to beat the best. New York may be Tim Cahill's address for now, but there's no doubt he's still very much an Australian boy. You know, I go home to Campbelltown or Norell and wherever and go up to the local RSL or um, wherever and you know, have a $10 meal with people that I grew up with because that's what they know me for. And if I didn't do that, then I pretty much know that I, I wouldn't be true to myself. That's when your mum would slap you, I reckon. But I still get a slap now. <laughs> slap or no slap, Tim Cahill works very hard at staying grounded. Can you feel it? And when he lines up for the World Cup in Brazil next month, there's no doubt he'll stand on the pitch knowing he's the boy from Campbelltown who really made good. My story's had some amazing you know, ups and downs, but at the end of it, something that I'm very proud of. And you know, hopefully a reflection, the biggest reflection on my story is if Tim Cahill can do it, then anybody's got a chance. <laughs>